F. Koinange live from the inside of the heavily fortified perimeter of the Westgate shopping mall. Behind me is what we're calling Ground Zero, where about a dozen days ago, armed terrorists literally walked up these steps, killing, shooting everything in sight, holding an entire mall and a nation hostage for four days. That was until the Kenya Defense Forces literally brought down the roof on them, killing some of them. Here's what we know so far. 67 people so far confirmed dead, hundreds injured, scores missing, probably trapped inside the rubble of this building here. We also know that about five of the terrorists may have been killed in the counterattack. So, who knew what and when? Were there warning signs? Who was sleeping on the job? And is it time for some heads to roll? These are some of the tough questions we'll be asking in the next hour on Jeff Koinange Live. This is the very first time cameras are being allowed inside the heavily fortified perimeter of this Westgate Mall complex. And Jeff Kinangi Live will be coming to you from here for the next couple of days. And when we say live, we mean it, meaning we want you to be a part of this show. Make it interactive. Many of you know my Twitter handle at Koinanga Jeff, hashtag JKL. Send us your questions, comments, and I'll read some of them throughout the show. Now straight to my first guest let's ask those hard questions he's been a member of the police force here in kenya for the past 33 years the position he holds now is the very first of its kind since the constitution of 2010. he's the inspector general of police david kamal ig thanks for coming on the Thank program you, appreciate your time <clears throat> let me let's get, get to the newsy part of the show first and we've got some news as early as this afternoon confirm if you will if this is true first that two women were arrested at kilimanjaro airport having left mombasa landed in kilimanjaro near arusha were arrested suspects possible suspects in this case is that true well thank you very much mr chef first and foremost because i'm appearing before you for the first time i want to take this opportunity to really on behalf of the national police service to send our message of condolences their families, their relatives and friends, for those people who lost their loved ones here at the Westgate Mall. Indeed. Number two, I also want to wish those who are still recuperating in the hospital a quick recovery for them to join their families back at home. Okay. Three, I also want to commend and appreciate the good work that all our officers of the National Police Service did on Saturday the 21st during this uh, attack at the Westgate Mall. All right, Aiji, we'll, we'll get to that, whether they did a good job or not. We'll get to that. The two women, were they arrested? Well, um, we have been following some leads uh, from various points here and there about the problem of the attack. And definitely those who have been arrested yesterday, today, those are some of the suspects that uh, we have been following for. Yeah. So, so definitely these are people that we are, we are going to interrogate. And finally, if they are the real people, then they will be prosecuted. Okay, could you confirm this? One of the suspects, according to my sources, could be, maybe, the so-called white widow, Samantha Lutzweight. True, false? Well, uh, probably you have your own sources, and we have our own sources, but uh, definitely um, our own sources is that it may not be one of those. May not be. Things. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm not sure what uh, source you have, but for us, uh, you say it's not. it's not. But they could be, they are suspects in this case. Of course, we have a number of suspects. Okay. Yeah, All right. Not only one. IG, how many terrorists were there? Because we're not even sure at this point exactly how many terrorists. Were there five? Were there seven? Were there eight? Were there 14? How many were there? Well, as far as our analysis investigation is concerned, so far we had uh, between four and six terrorists in this particular attack. But initially, of course, we had already given a figure of 10 to 15, which we are still investigating. Uh, to get a clear picture on that. So, so used, definitely yeah. we have um, a number of suspects that we are following on. Did any escape, IG? Did any escape through that tunnel we keep seeing and hearing about? Did any escape? Really, I do not have any information so far that there was any escape in this particular place. So you're saying that the terrorists, the four to six, 
are in that rubble in the building yeah. behind us. That's how I believe that for those terrorists who came and attacked this particular place, uh, the people that we saw, even in our clips, that uh, they were between four and, uh, and six. And definitely if there were more, as per our report earlier on, then definitely we shall be able to come up yeah. after the investigation. IG, how but the investigation is in progress that we may not be able now to discuss further on that. Okay. How about putting some pictures out, putting some names out, letting Kenyans know who these people are. We haven't seen any in 12 days, IG. Well, definitely it is part of the process that we are doing at the moment, as we said, that the investigation is in high gear and we are progressing well. So soon you may be able to see them, some names being in the newspapers or even in the TV and so forth. Do so we are in progress. Do, of you, our do you think it's taken long enough, IG? Because, you know, Kenyans want answers. The questions are coming in thick and fast, and we're not getting the answers that we need to hear. Well, thank you very much. It's a very good question, especially for the Kenyans to know that as part and parcel of the investigation, investigation may not have a limit to say it is too long, it is too short. Investigation goes on until we finalize that we have gotten the fellows. Okay, let me ask you this, IG. There's reports that say during the first day, when you all were here, when you came a, a, a few minutes after it happened, well, first of all, there's some reports that say the police were slow in getting here. That the first responders were the, the civilians with guns. Those people, we call, some people call reservists, but civilians with guns. And the flying squad as well. And that the regular police took a while to get here. True, false? Well, thank you, Chair, for that question, especially for Kenyans to know that first of all, we had security officers in this building. So when one says it took police too long, first of all, we had three police officers in this building. And those are the first group of officers who reacted and gave information out. And I can say that for the first time, this could have been one of the best reactions by the police. Within, within the shortest time possible. You say the best reaction? After, yeah, but, to me. But there were only six terrorists, according to you and three police officers already on the ground? These are police officers who are engaged on duties here. And uh, definitely when people come in uh, pretending to be customers and so forth, you cannot be able to know who is a terrorist. Yeah, but IG, they shot their way in. You could see dead bodies on that staircase behind it. They shot their way in. Yes, uh, definitely when you have an intelligent information and you know that, that an attack could happen any time within that place, that is the time that you can prepare. But this particular attack, People were caught unaware. So including the officers who are just on normal routine duties, yeah. that they didn't know that. And that's why they were able to react and met the tourists themselves to be locked in inside the field. Otherwise, they would have escaped all of them okay. after the attack. All right. So several hours later, you call in Recce Squad. And Recce is part of GSU. They are crack squad, well-trained, well-equipped. They were in here. And some reports say they had the building secured. Well, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. I don't think that there were several hours that we called for the issue. Immediately, I, as an individual person, as the Inspector General, I was in my office and I received the report. Immediately, as I received the report, then I would be able to mobilize, call the senior officers to be able to send a man um, to, the, to the scene of the crime. And quickly, as we were moving in, all of us, I arrived here, and in a short while, the officers had already arrived. It means that they were reacting very quickly on the incident that was reported. But they were clearly... So it was not several hours. But they Remember were clearly... Remember this happened at 12.30? Yeah. And by around one, a number of officers were already here. And including myself, within well, a period of half an hour, mm. I was also but here. But these so. guys already had hostages. They had killed so many people by then. Why, how could they not be overpowered by then? Well, we can say that, um, Mr. Chef, that this was, this was a cowardly act. In fact, these people, their mission was just to come and shoot and kill. There was not even a matter of taking hostage people. And uh, we never had a report that they were able to take hostage anybody. They didn't do that. Theirs was just to come and kill. And this is very, very a cowardly act that we, have, we believe as a country that this terrorist group actually they came for the mission of killing. And uh, if there were people to come and uh, take people hostages, they could have communicated and they could have talked to, yeah, to us yeah. that uh, we really need this and that so that we release the people as hostages. Aji, let me ask you this question. If Reki had this building secured, why did the Kenya Defense Forces have to come in then? It's a question many people are asking. 
Recky had the building secured? Well, um, this is one of the serious international uh, global uh, terrorist attack. And whenever there is this kind of a situation, everybody who has the mandate of securing the country has a right to come on the ground and assist. Yeah, but you and had these people, you were in control, in command and control of Reki and all the police forces. And then these guys came and they reduced you to a foot soldier. No, no, no. I don't think that was the case. In fact, immediately we came here and I kept a blessing to the officers that you were calling out the crack uh, team. And they moved in together with other officers who had already arrived here, including the officers who were rescuing people. And they were able to do a commendable job. Personally, I witnessed here, the, the, our minister, indeed your minister also joined us, and we were witnessing all this happening. But later on, as we were moving to this particular place, everybody was concerned, including the head of state of this country. Everybody was concerned what is happening in Mall. Who so therefore, even the KDF were concerned, and that's why they came in later to assist them. Who? So, so you're telling me there wasn't any friction between the police force and the military? Not any that I know of. As uh, National Police Service Inspector General, the KDF, CDF himself, was on the ground here. You were happy? And there was nothing like there was a friction. You were happy we, to step aside? We never stepped aside. There was nothing like stepping aside. If you look at um, the KDF Act 1633, the there is need for them to support the civil authority. And it's very clear, you need not even to wait, especially the magnitude of the problem mm. that was coming. But on don't forget, that only, you said there's only six terrorists in there. There's hundreds of soldiers, Nobody police. Nobody knew the number of the terrorists at that time as we were coming here. But that's why we were estimating between 10 and 15. And even after now, mm. we still believe that was the number. Who made the call to bring the roof down? Well, uh, I think systematically, as we can be able to explain that when the attack was going on. Uh, definitely now the KDF moved in and they supported our officers. We made arrangement, a systematic operational arrangement that all of us jointly, we were able to address the problem. Remember, we, we were, I was the Inspector General, we have the CDF himself, we have the Director General of the NSIS, mm. and all of us, we established a command center. You think that was a good call? To ensure that we need to address this problem. IG, was that a good call, bring the building, bring the, the roof down? I don't think there's any people who brought this building down. They, well, what the tourists did as we were engaging them was to set the building on fire. Yeah. As a result of that heavy fire, you saw the smoke and so forth. Yeah. We believe that that fire actually cut at the place and brought the floor down. At the end of the day, IG, were there hostages that were being held by the terrorists when the roof came down? Well, I said earlier on, Chef, that um, these terrorists came to shoot and destroy. They came and to kill and destroy. There were nobody or there was nobody whom they held hostage. You know, holding people hostage, you are holding hostage and make some kind of advanced demand. But there was nobody who called anywhere to say, we have this number of people and Kenya government should be able to sit and give us ransom or something like that. Okay, so when we... But therefore, yeah. I cannot say that there were some people that were held hostage other than as they shoot, you know, people take cover. Sure. And you don't know what is happening. Sure, but the, the scores... So if that is what we call uh, all the people hostage, yeah. that could be. Okay, the scores of people we're hearing are missing. It, it could be in this building right here because I can still smell the stench of death. I'm sure you can even hear coming through this, th th this door. There's bodies, there's remains in there, aren't they? Well, um, we actually established the forensic team. And our forensic experts who are here up to now, they are still here, scooping the debris, making sure that we recover the bodies of our soldiers that were here, the bodies of the terrorists that we believe they were also in the rubble, and any other body that we probably we think that could be there. But for us, we think that a number of people actually were rescued and they went out. So at the moment, we have, uh, through the, uh, the Red Cross, we had initially 61 people reported to Red Cross, and the number kept on going down, going down to death. We still have a list of 28 people that claim that their people are missing. Okay, what if and I therefore, yeah. we are waiting now for those people, and we still appeal to death, that even I feel as Inspector General, but of those people who have lost their loved ones, mm. and they have not found them to death, kindly please report to this center, or report to the, the county yeah. criminal investigating officer in Nairobi area, 
we record their statements so that we can be able to publish even photos of those people who are still missing. Okay, IG, so what if? So we want to announce that very, sure. very clearly. Okay, what if, them. IG, what if a week from now, two weeks from now, a month from now, we find out that there's 200 dead people in there? What are you going to say to, to Kenyans now? Because you're saying now there's 28. What are you going to tell them then? I don't know where you're getting the 200 or the 100 plus. As of now, nobody has made an official formal report as usual to a police station of a missing person. But what the report uh, that we have is that they have made the report to Red Cross. And personally, I've talked to the Secretary General, uh, who is also a good friend of ours, that can we be able to get a contact. And he sent me the list of the people that have reported to him. And the list kept on, you know, coming down. Yeah. That they have found some of them in the mortuary, some of the people have been killed, found alive coming home, and so forth. So, so far we are saying there are 28 people who have reported that their people are still missing. And how many can and we, have, we want to encourage those people yeah. that they really need now to make a formal report to us. Because if they will be any dead anywhere, we will have to open an inquest. Mm. to that effect. How many dead KGF soldiers in there, General? Do we know? Uh, well, we, we lost uh, six of our officers. Just six? Six of our officers, five KDF and one police officer. And two of the KDF officers were trapped in, in this room. And therefore, we believe that there were two officers mm. only. Yeah. And so far, I think the bodies of those two officers have been recovered. Mm. IG, I got to ask you this question before I let you go. The looting question. There's been it's, it's been a, almost a, a national embarrassment to, to find out that 10 days later, shop owners go in there and they see they've been looted left, right and center and nobody else has been in that building other than your people. What do you have to say to that? Well, thank you very much. First of all, I want to say that uh, in law, there's nothing that, like looting. There's no name in our laws in this country called looting. What could have happened here is theft of property. That is stealing of property. Okay. And Call um, what you will. if that actually has happened, and that's why we were encouraging members of public all along that those who have lost their properties to come up and the counter check, make a formal report to us, and do that. I have a list of 21 people who have complained to have lost their properties. And this is subject now to investigation because we have opened up a file, and any officer of the service, either the National Police or the KDF yeah, how, who will be found to have stolen how you gonna find property. Them? How are you going to find them, IG? Investigation. Definitely. Yeah, but you know, they've taken the stuff, they're probably selling it now. How are you going to find it? How are you going to compensate these people? Some of them may not be able to open these I doors. I want to assure the Kenyans and also Mr. Chef here that investigation when it's carried out, nobody will be spared, will be found to have been accomplished in the theft of the properties here. So we are not going to spare anybody. And nobody's above the law okay. on this. All right. And soon you may hear some people going to be prosecuted. Well, I hope if so. we recover some properties and also the statement that is being, being brought forward. Yeah, I hope so, be IG, because it's a national embarrassment. So, okay, the president has called for a, a commission of inquiry. If that commission finds out that the police dropped the ball, that the, you know, and, and, it, and it, bla it lays blame at your door, will you resign? Well, thank you very much. Uh, the reason why of the Commission of Inquiry is to establish the truth. And this is what we want to find out. The truth must come out. What if the blame would is not, at your door? Would it not do what? Exactly. So yeah. that now we find out if it is the National Police Service and also the Inspector General did not play a, uh, its role effectively as is required of us, which we believe as National Police Service that we did our first with the first of our knowledge and Philip. And therefore, whoever will find us to have uh, plowed the law and not follow the right procedures, they be it. We want to face that particular Even condition. you? Even myself. You will resign? Definitely, if I'm found killed to have not performed my duties as required of me, which of course, to my belief, I did it. I can tell you, Chef, some of us who have not been sleeping for the last, last nine months mm. since I've been in the office. Yeah. So where did we go wrong? So here is a situation where we should actually shoulder responsibilities as a nation, we have a duty to protect the lives and property of Kenyans. We have a duty to play our role as patriotic national police service. And therefore, if any blame is coming to us, we are ready to face that blame. Indeed. And the challenges. You too, eh? IG, thanks so much for your time. Thank you very appreciate much. Appreciate it. But I wanted to also appreciate your calling here. And I wanted to say earlier on that I want to commend all our national police service officers who are good job. Absolutely. I want to commend the KDF officers, led by the chief 
of defense himself and the director general of NSIS yeah. that we did a commendable job here. And there's no bad blood? Uh, for what? For between you? No, 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 with blood. With blood, blood, blood. We are working as government officials and patriotic and also loyal to the East Excellence, the president and to the people of this country I, as patriotic. I think you're being a little diplomatic, IG, but you know, it's okay. You, no, it's, we, it's part we, of your job. There is nothing that uh, we are hiding from here. <laughs> All right. We have done our good job, only yeah. that we are still very, very sorry for those people. Sure. And in fact, even for those people who are still in trauma now, okay. that we really need to have issue counseling so that they can be counseled well and assume normal. Indeed. But we must share information. Let the members of public share information with us. Any stranger around, moving around, mm. please. Let us get that particular information and we shall act with it effectively Absolutely. as it is required. Of Thanks, IG. Appreciate Thank you your time. Much. Thank you. Good Thank job. You. Okay. Inspector General of Police David Kimayo there talking to us live on the program. Coming up, two remarkable stories. One of them, the first, one of the first people to arrive on the scene. That's why probably he's the first responder. Kenya Red Cross's Secretary General Abbas Goulet. And also another equally remarkable story, Faith Wambua who literally played dead for four or five hours with her two young children and lived to talk about it. It's her very first time right here in the heavily guarded perimeter of the Westgate shopping mall. Stay with us. Jeff Koinangi Live will be back in a moment.